Hi, it's Steve again at the Vintage Model Channel, Model Builds Channel, Steve's Vintage Model Builds. Uh, thanks for stopping by. Um, hit 300 subscribers earlier this week and over the weekend. Uh, so thanks to everyone again. Really appreciate it. Everyone's time is valuable and uh, I can't thank, thank everyone enough for spending some of theirs with me and my channel. And today uh, we've got kind of an interesting uh, little kit here. Uh, originally popped up in my uh, my first uh, bargain bins, uh, bargain bin uh, buys video. I'll put up a card for that. Uh, the sound quality might not have been very good there, um, so I do apologize for that. Um, I've, I've corrected that now, um, but yeah, if you want to stop by and check it out, um, I've also done reviews on the, the three other kits uh, in that particular group. So I mentioned this was uh, a little different. Where do I put it here? Oh, first of all, I got this at the bargain bin kit for $9.99 at NRC Hobbies, uh, Matt's Hobby Shop here in town. Uh, and it's from 1977. The manufacturer is Novo, and it's a 172 scale Black Widow Heavy Night Fighter, catalog number 78088. One of the things that's a, a little different other than its age is if uh, if you look here closely you'll see it says made in USSR um, which for 1977 was very interesting uh, didn't see a lot of things from the USSR in the West um, I mean besides spies um, back in 1977 and uh, when I did the research on it, I found that it was, uh, this was actually a, a frog kit uh, from fo Frog Models. That was a British manufacturer, I think. And not sure how the Soviets got their hands on uh, molds uh, from a defunct British manufacturer. But anyways, obviously it happened. So we've got a uh, nice box art, uh, hand painted by a fellow named Rush or a person named Rush. And on the side, the box reads contents 60 parts, undercarriage up or down, decal sheet with markings for alternate versions. On base of box. There we go. I'll show you that in a minute. Wings, wingspan is 11 inches. And here on the back we have the uh, color and painting guide. And uh, they have two versions, uh, USAAF 422nd Night Fighter Squadron and 422nd Night Fighter Squadron one was a dash five, the other is a dash ten. So that's interesting. And the note there requires cement and tape, paint, uh, paint, excuse me. So we'll open this up and we'll see what we've got here. Instruction booklet, decals, get to those after, and a whole bunch of parts in a single bag. Uh, Matt and I, we opened this up and, get, well, I mean, it, it was already opened, and 
and uh, it almost looks like it, uh, someone, uh, oh, well, he told me he got it at an estate sale to start with. Um, and yeah, it almost looks like someone had started to build it and then uh, decided not to and put it back in the bag. Uh, but we inventoried all the parts and uh, everything's there. So we'll take a look at it. in a separate bag. Don't think this was the original bag. I think this was a bag for something else. Kind of a different pattern on it. But hey, $9.99. Let's see what we get here. Okay, so yeah, everything was taken off here. Um, this looks like a flap. Engine cowlings, quite a bit of flash on this one. Nothing on this one. So it'll need a bit of trimming up. Plastic looks okay, feels okay. Um, little discoloration here in spots but it's all going to get painted black anyway and yeah we got one side of the fuselage the other side of the fuselage And it'll be need, need some trimming, but it looks okay. And again, a little bit of flash. Not much detail, just some panel lines and again, some discoloration. And the panel lines are raised. got one figure here or half a figure uh, of one of the pilots one propeller no flash the other propeller lots of flash uh, fairly good detail on this little pilot um, again he'll need some trimming up but you can see you know he can see his face and he looks like a real person goggles so there you go. And uh, back in the day, you know, frog kits they were they were fairly inexpensive. They were they were along the same lines of uh, Matchbox, maybe not quite as good. And they often came in a bag. Um, you know, with the instructions, uh, they there was like a bag. like a bag and then there was like a cardboard piece that had a picture and when you opened up the cardboard piece that was where your instructions were another plastic piece looks like it's broken off but salvageable put those away separately carefully And got wheels, rear stabilizers, flaps, fair bit of flash. This looks like engine nacelle. Hope we have two. Otherwise, it's a piece of junk. And we've got upper and lower wings. 
again discoloration of the plastic kind of yellowed this looks like a Bombay door another clear part Not seeing that second nacelle. Uh oh. And so we've got that. More flash. Here we have a seated hole pilot. Okay. And we've got the rear horizontal stabilizer that went between the the two parts. More wing parts. And little bits and pieces. And we've got the uh, maybe this is for the other version. I don't know. Not seeing that second nacelle, uh, but uh, maybe we'll have to do it with a open engine. Huh. That'll be interesting. That's just garbage at this point. Some might say the whole kit's garbage, but hey, ten bucks, I took a chance, right? All right. And uh, yeah, this uh, uh, this plastic is uh, fairly flimsy, but some nice detail. Looks pretty good, actually. Uh, I'll just put it back in there. This other one. Thought we had everything, but maybe not. So that goes back in there. And we've got Hustle and Hussy. Two different uh, two different uh, registration markings and the US stars. Decals look uh, not great. Um, they're discolored, and they probably weren't very good to start with. Oh, here's one double trouble. So we've got that, and it looks like we've got some other panel stuff. I don't know. Let's see about that. Okay, so yes, so we get the instruction leaflet. It's somewhat discolored as well. Folds out this way and folds down. So we'll turn it over here and we've got the 
English instructions, test assembly position and fit to parts before cementing. Excuse me. Paint small parts before assembly and assemble in sequence shown. They give you some nice modeling tips. Special instructions, fit plastic weight into central nacelle before cementing halves together. Uh, oh, plasticine. Remember what plasticine was? <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, um, you can use that or silly putty or uh, whatever, you, whatever you feel like. A little glossary. When to cement, when not to cement, when to cut, when to shape with a hot knife. I don't think that's going to apply here. And indicates if there's an alternative assembly. Here they give you some more modeling tips, which is very nice. And a little write-up here. Uh, named after a venomous American spider, that's uh, North and South American. Uh, this uh, twin boom plane was the first American one to be designed specifically as a night fighter. Some 700 Black Widows were built and they were operated in Europe, the Pacific and Asia. It's interesting that original planes were painted matte black in the belief that this would make them less visible in the dark, but further experiments showed that gloss black was more effective. Engines were two 2,000 horsepower Pratt & Whitney R2800s, maximum speed 350 miles per hour, armament two of 50 caliber machine guns in the turret, four 20 millimeter cannon in the lower fuselage. Somebody must have got licensed for something because it says here Novo Toys Limited, Maxi Peterborough, PE6 9HQ. And uh, that would be Peterborough, United Kingdom, not Peterborough, Ontario, Canada. So, again, all those. Spies, all spies. Okay, so let's take a look here. Okay, so we start with the half pilot on a on a platform, the full pilot in the seat on a platform. Assembly of the uh, of the first engine. Assembly of the landing gear. Pretty basic stuff. Uh, yeah, it says to not glue this and to uh, use a hot knife to melt it. Junior modelers, make sure you're being supervised if you're using the hot knife stuff. And it, it, it's nice they give uh, they give different profiles throughout here. There you go. And uh, that piece wasn't an engine nacelle. It looks like it's the lower part of the body, so we're not missing anything. And. Uh, Continuing with the assembly here, um, the, the rear rudder is uh, designed to, to move back and forth, so that's nice. Tells you not to glue. Uh, again, uh, V 
the uh, it tells you not to glue this assembly here, uh, and that would mean that um, the the landing gear is actually retractable. So you don't have to decide whether to build it up or build it down. Um, you can put it up or put it down. And um, yeah, so coming along nicely. Um, not not too disappointed what I'm seeing here. Uh, step number nine uh, shows the, the rear uh, tailplane stabilizer. And here you have the option open or closed, open or closed cockpit. Again, we're seeing, seeing profiles, which are very nice. And again, open or closed. And the final assembly here. Not, not too complicated a kit. And uh, for 10 bucks, hey, what the heck. It looks okay. And uh, once it's all painted up, it'll look pretty respectable on the shelf. Okay, so now we get down to the rating. And I'll, I'll put up a card on this. Uh, I did a short video on how I rate kits and the criteria that I use. Uh, I believe it's fair and uh, leaves room for um, uh, wow factor and so forth. So basically uh, it's, uh, it's 12 points altogether, 10 standard points, uh, 2 points for packaging, 2 points for sprues, 3 points for parts, 3 points for instructions. Up to uh, a quarter bonus point available for any wow factor uh, in each category and an additional up to one full bonus point for value uh, I look at value not just the, the you know the base price of the kit uh, but uh, I factor in how much uh, how many hours of enjoyment I expect to get out of it and after build reviews, uh, when I do them, uh, uh, they'll just be on uh, graded on uh, poor, fair, good, excellent, or outstanding. So, uh, as far as the packaging, okay, so the original frog tooling was in 1965. Uh, which makes uh, makes this tooling the second oldest of any uh, of the kits that I have. Seven, so this is the original 77 box. Excuse me. Okay, so here we go. Uh, for packaging, yeah, I mean, the... Uh, The box is, box is bashed up, and given leeway, you know, still, um, but nice box art, hand painted, nice touch here with the contrails, but yeah, one and a half points. Actually, no, one and three quarters. I'm only going to take a quarter point off for the bash box because otherwise everything was it was all good uh, the sprues well we saw about the sprues uh, pieces were missed for were you know broken off there was flash um, one ejection pin mark on the on the, the full pilot there but it was at the back so easily nipped off nip it nip it nip it you've got to nip it in the bud 
you know who I'm talking about. And um, so, yeah, so that's one and a half. Uh, yeah, quarter point off for the flash and uh, quarter point off for all the other stuff. Um, parts, quality of plastic was good. You know, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna knock them off for, uh, for a bit of yellowing in the plastic after all this time, especially since the box was unsealed, and it's gonna get painted over anyways. Uh, but the detail, uh, detail was not very good. Uh, there were no warped or broken parts, and the decals. Uh, will probably be a challenge uh, to be used um, but we'll see so yeah so that's uh, two and a half off on or sorry two and a half there quarter point off for um, the detail and the decals and lastly uh, the instructions get 2.75 out of 3 uh, they did have brief general service and history notes that was nice Everything was in black and white, uh, but the you know the instructions were clear. They were laid out nicely, and uh, so you know can't ding them too much for that. And uh, lastly, uh, half a point, half a point for value. Um, you know, for nine ninety nine, I don't know what this cost originally, but you know, for nine ninety nine Canadian. Uh, plus tax, of course. Um, you know, I, I think I'm going to get a few uh, pretty good hours out of this. And, it, you know, uh, on that one little test fit, it looked like it, it was going to go together fine. And as far as I know from Frog, I can't remember ever building a Frog kit uh, when I was uh, when I was a kid. Um Probably mostly because uh, we didn't get them over in Canada. I can't even remember ever seeing them. And it was someone else who had to tell me that this was originally a frog kit um, when I first brought it up. And thank you. Uh, I appreciate extra information. I appreciate comments. Uh, I, I, and, and I welcome it when people um, correct my mistakes. No problem there. Please let's just try and be respectful and profanity won't be tolerated. If you don't like what I'm doing, fine, whatever. Uh, but that's the way it is. Okay, so uh, that brings us to a total of 9 out of 12, which uh, for a, a kit produced in the USSR in 1977, I think that's a pretty good and fair score. So we'll have to wait and see how it builds up. Uh, but uh, I don't see any big problems with it. So, thanks again. Uh, as always, I appreciate everyone watching. And uh, appreciate all the subscribers. And, uh, as I said, comments. Very, very... Uh, uh, I'm always attentive to those. And happy to... Uh, make changes where changes are necessary. So uh, that's it for, for this video and uh, we'll keep you up to date on the build when it comes and it's pretty far down the line but it will come. Uh, it's a long winter here. We had snow today here. Snow and we had heavy snow, heavy rain, heavy snow here on Vancouver Island uh, so that's January for us okay so again thanks very much and we'll be uh, seeing you on the flip side bye now